when you do what we do, which is speak outside the norm, and you dare to speak truth to power in the country Nigeria, you do so fully cognizant of the risks that you are taking. Nigeria is a dangerous place to speak truth. Speaking truth in Nigeria endangers your life. And I doubt there is anyone of the radical persuasion who is not already aware of the extent of dangers that we daily deal with when we open our mouths to speak the truth in Nigeria. That is dangerous, and we're already in that dangerous place. However, on Monday last week, I've been hearing hints, I've been, I've, I've been hearing hints. I've, I've, I've known that some people, a lot of people are pissed off with me, particularly because of what I have had to say in relation to the NSAS protests, the killings at the toll gate, and the reopening, the planned reopening of that toll gate. I was already aware that I was offending a lot of powerful people. But by Monday, I first got hint of, I, I, I sensed something wasn't right, but by Tuesday, it was confirmed. I got a call. I know one of the persons who was mentioned, even at a personal level, is somebody I've known for years. And um, <laughs> it would be most stupid of me to dismiss what I was told and the veracity of what I was told. Being confronted with that, I consulted with Baba as the head of the organization to which I belong. I spoke with a few other friends as well, and we all agreed that given the experiences of Nigeria and Chibolaike, who was the attorney general, a sitting attorney general, and was murdered in his own bedroom, in his own house, in sleepy Bodija in Ibadan. Given the fact that we have also witnessed the gruesome murder of Delegiwa, who briefed his lawyer on a Friday, Chief Ghani was preparing to do something about it on the Monday, and by Sunday, Delegiwa was bumped to smithereens. We will all die. That is, this, that is the only thing that is certain for all who draws breath. I have told the law enforcement officers, I have sent them my petition clearly, and I have requested protection from the Nigerian state. However, certain persons amongst my own friends, Baba Ogunla and uh, Mr. Ademilui here, key members of my family, and certainly friends and associates from way back, they are fully aware of the facts and I have shared these facts with them so that should anything happen, they know who to allocate the guilt to. In this case, I am telling the public, I have never ever once sought anything from my public advocacy. I do not desire political office, I am not looking for money, and I am not chasing clout. This is about the future. I have children. They should be able to live in a country where they are free and where they are able to fulfill the potentials that God has deposited in them. So when I open my mouth and I am speaking, I am speaking for those who do not have a voice. I am speaking for the forkanizer on the street who cannot articulate his position. I am speaking for the carpenter. I'm speaking for those who do not have, not everybody would have a camera in front of them. And when they do have cameras in front of them, not all of them can articulate their position. And it is very critical that Nigerians understand clearly, I am not a drug bearer. I do not do business with anybody. I don't cheat anyone. If anything should happen to me, look no further than the persons I have named in my petition, whose identities I have already made clear to my own associates and friends. And in addition to this, open your eyes and be clear. I am in Lagos State. In Lagos State, there is a fusion between the criminal element and the ruling class. 
I say that without any equivocation. There is a fusion between the criminal element and the ruling hegemony. I have not joined any one of them in sharing anything, and I have no worries about consequences of things I might have done in my own space. But let people not look any further than the hegemony ruling this state and the persons I have mentioned specifically in my petition, if anything should happen to me.